In this video, we're again going to be taking a look at how pro guitar players play guitar versus how beginners play a guitar. And we're identifying the things that really make the difference beyond just playing the song correctly, playing the pattern correctly. What's the difference that makes the difference to hopefully help you make some really game-changing differences in your playing and really bring you forward? One habit that beginner players can develop is playing all the strings all the time when they're strumming guitar. Now what do I mean by that? Well, if you're playing a G chord to a C add 9, say, super common um, chord progression or um, chords that are used in beginner songs but also plenty of advanced songs too, if we use the most common strumming pattern ever, down, down, up, up, down. A beginner would strum on the G chord all six strings all the time. Down, down, up, up, down. Because that's the pattern, right? But what tends to happen at higher levels, as a default, as something to play with, we would play thicker strings on the down strums and just the thinner strings, perhaps the thinner three or thinner two, on the up strums. And that would create this sound. Now, of course, from there, we have the option to do a full strum of all six strings on either a down or an up, uh, depending on the pattern, depending on the feel you're going for. But compared to... and... There's definitely a big difference and you'll start to feel it a lot more with other patterns that you go for. For example, um, if we hit an E chord and just do it with all down strumming, for example, it's a bit much all down eights, full pelt all the time, all six strings. Whereas if we hit just the thicker ones, Not hitting all the strings all the time is definitely something to be playing about with. There are not many strumming patterns or songs I would go for where I would, all the way through it, all the time, be hitting all six strings or all five strings if we're going for a root five chord, for example. Technique-wise, one thing that's going to help all your strumming patterns sound a lot better naturally is if we're using more of a twist of the wrist rather than an up and down motion. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you just put your hand out in front of you and go, mm, maybe, do the hand sign for maybe, kind of like this. Um, that, is, that twist of the wrist is the motion that we want to be defaulting to when we're strumming. Now, obviously, that's an exaggeration. We don't have a flat hand and do this when we're strumming. We're naturally a little bit more, we're, we're in a more of a fist motion really. And I would encourage using just the thumb and first finger when we hold a pick, though you can do two fingers as well. I prefer like this. When we do that, hitting the thicker strings on down strums and thinner strings on up strums, is a lot more natural and it's something you want to play about with, especially for our faster strumming patterns, you know, something... Something like that. That's only available to you if you just do the twisting kind of motion or based on that there's always everything on guitar is a very unique thing but that's something to play about with if you want a more natural and much easier strumming motion another thing that beginner players do that perhaps professional guitarists wouldn't is play exactly the same strumming pattern for an entire song now this is totally understandable i mean you want to get the song right you want to get the strumming pattern right so you always play that one and if you're used to playing that wrong you can think, yes, get in, I'm playing it right, I'm doing it the same all the time. 
but a pro wants to add something. A, a musician wants to give something feeling. Otherwise, what's the point in it being heard and listened to, right? No one's going to listen to it if it doesn't have some feel to the playing. Let's take that same most common strumming pattern of all time, uh, just down, down, up, up, down. And let me riff with this with a G chord, a C major chord, and a D chord. So let me do a beginner version, and what you're listening out for is it's at the same level all the time. And it's also pretty loud. Most beginner guitar players perhaps play louder than they need to. Hopefully you heard the impact that the thicker strings and then thinner strings idea had. Thicker on a down strum, thinner on the up. But I was also adding more strums or less strums at certain times. Uh, volume wise, dynamics wise, sometimes more, sometimes less. And then I started to add uh, single string picking and then a little uh, D sus4 to D. We'll look at more of that in a separate video when I'm going to look at more embellishments, like specific embellishments that we can add for this thing. But just not having the concept that we're not going to stick to the same strumming pattern for an entire song is a great thing to be adding to your playing, especially when it's a strumming pattern that you can do. If you're playing that strumming pattern right every time, now's the time to actually vary that, but to give it feel. Now, of course, if we're strumming, we're going to be changing chords and wanting those chords to sound great. And one point I just wanted to make again, which was in my uh, the previous video in this little mini series, is just a lift off on the four and or lift off from your chord early to arrive on your chord exactly when you want it to be. Sometimes that's going to be on beat one. Sometimes it'll be on beat three. Sometimes it's on an and or somewhere else for more syncopated patterns. Doesn't matter, lift off slightly early, arrive when you need to arrive, and keep the strumming hand moving. The chord playing hand moves to the strumming hand, not the other way around. Another thing that pro guitarists tend to add um, that beginners might not are muting techniques and percussive techniques. This becomes particularly evident at things like open mic nights, acoustic open mic nights, where you have one person playing after another, everyone does one song, and if everyone's at a certain level, you're gonna hear a lot of just strumming. For example, you're gonna hear this a lot. And it can all get a little flat and everyone can sound a bit the same. And as soon as one person, for example, just starts muting, it suddenly gives you a different gear. And we have different things we can do with muting. We can do palm muting. Where we're placing the outside of the palm of our hand just here on the bridge. And we have muting where we get silence. By laying the outside of the palm of our hand over the strings, but just to stop the sound. But those muting techniques really elevate your stuff. It's something that's covered a lot more with electric guitar players because it's part of the riff, for example, you know, rock riffs like Highway to Hell. We need that muting for it to sound like the riff. It's not as common that that happens for acoustic guitar riffs, so it's something to watch out for. Bar muting and muting. A 
as in getting silence to make your riff. The other thing that I was slightly adding there is a little bit of this percussive tap sound and other percussive techniques. We can get a tap uh, just here by hitting your thumb. Uh, again, string six and uh, getting string six to hit the frets here. That gives us a really nice kind of snare tap sound. This is often used in some finger style playing. And we can also do that with kind of a little strum where we do it more with our hand and this often happens with bar chords actually. Getting kind of this thing happening. Those are both more percussive techniques and percussive taps which again give you a, a acoustic guitar is an acoustic instrument but it's a very percussive instrument we, we can really hit the guitar to get some feeling out of it more than just playing chords for example something like a piano or a keyboard not very percussive instruments so this is something where the acoustic guitar can really excel The final point I want to make is just a reminder of the importance of dynamics. If you're strumming, then the only thing your strumming hand can impact is how many strings you hit and the velocity that you hit them with. And the tone of the strings and the sound of the guitar varies massively between a really loud bright strum and a quieter um, subtler strum, perhaps more dampened strum, or something that's more rocky versus there are countless different ways. The fingertips, uh, if we play with finger style, sound very different, they have a very different tone to playing with a pick and it's just a reminder to pay attention to that as well as and more so than the downs and ups you hit because you want once you're getting it right once you can play something how you know the main pattern is down down up up down or whatever then you want to be varying it and adding feeling and sometimes that feeling is playing more sometimes often it's actually playing less and being a bit quieter so you've got more room to grow. Let me know your thoughts on all of this and what you find that you needed to add to your playing to take you to the next level. What's really helped you with your strumming and rhythm? Let me know in the comments down below. Give this video a like if you dig it and you can find more helpful lessons and a full strumming course at andyguitar.co.uk and on the Andy Guitar app.